on episode 499 of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we meet Barbara Bollinger and Margaret Crane and discuss their new book, Not Dead Yet. You can find the full show notes for this episode at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 499. Have you decided you're ready to make a change? To reclaim your health and fitness. The 40 Plus Fitness Podcast is here for you. I'm your host, Alan Meisner. I'm an NSAM certified personal trainer with a specialization in corrective exercise and fitness nutrition. Let me be your coach as you find your way on your health and fitness journey. All right, let's go. This episode of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast is sponsored by Haka Life Nutrition, the maker of GLX3. I am really glad to have Haka Life Nutrition as a sponsor. Omega-3 is one of the few supplements I take regularly. But even with years of experience and having interviewed hundreds of experts in the health and fitness field, I have struggled to find a great solution until now. We all know farm-raised meat doesn't give us the right balance of omega-3 to omega-6 and that omega-3 helps reduce inflammation, which reduces joint pain and is heart healthy. Getting enough omega-3 isn't as straightforward as it should be. From the mercury in the fish to poor production controls, it's really hard to find a high-quality product that gives you what you're after. That is until GLX-3. Made from green-lipped mussels from New Zealand, this is the only natural source of ETA. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the full name. This version of omega-3 is particularly effective at reducing inflammation and therefore reducing joint pain. That's why my wife is taking it now. I take it for heart health. Go to hakalife.com forward slash 40 plus and use the discount code 40 plus to get a buy one, get one free deal on your first order, which gives you a two month starter supply. GLX3 is my go to omega 3 supplement going forward. It can be yours too by going to hakalife.com forward slash 40 plus and be sure to use the discount code 40 plus for the BOGO deal. The other day I was chatting with a guy about weight loss and fitness, and he said to me, now's not a good time. This is one excuse I hear a lot, and it bothers the crap out of me. Time is not on your side when it comes to getting healthier and more fit. The aging curve continues to march on. Sarcopenia, osteopenia, weight gain. If you're putting it off until the timing is perfect, I have a sad truth for you. There's never a perfect time. Life doesn't get in the way, life is the way. Losing weight and getting fit isn't a destination or a result of a project. It is a product of a developed, healthy lifestyle. Living life in a way that keeps you strong, energetic, and feeling great. You're listening to this podcast, which tells me you know all of this. You know what you need to do, but you're not consistently doing it. Maybe you start, but then something derails you. You're not getting the results you want the results you need. If you're serious about weight loss, it's time to do something different, something more. It's time to invest in a coach. If you'd like to see if the 40 Plus Fitness 12-week gas program is for you, email me, alan at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com. We can set up a call so I can understand where you are, and then we can put together a plan that will work for you. Don't let another day week, month, or year pass with you getting the same you've always got. Get off the roller coaster. Email me, alan at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com, and get the guidance, accountability, and support you need to lose the weight for good. Hey, Raz. How you doing? Good. How are you today, Alan? I'm doing okay. I'm feeling pretty good. Um, It's been really, really busy. Yeah. Uh, Trying to get a lot of things done. We're, We're planning a trip back to the States. And so booking all that travel and, and getting it all organized and mm-hmm. just other stuff that's going on. It's like, okay, I got to get all this stuff done and get it done before, you know, this date and <laughs> make sure everything's organized and ready because, you know, there's still a lot of moving parts in my life that aren't mm-hmm. completely within my control. Right. Oh <laughs> yeah. It's a big trip from you for you guys coming from down there all the way up here. It is. Uh, we're going to fly up and then drive the, the circuit um, that includes uh, Pensacola, North, Northwest Indiana, North Carolina, and, uh, Miami. Oh boy. And, and I think there's, yeah, there's even a stop in new Orleans in there. So, oh, wow. you know, so yeah, it, 
round trip, I, I just measured it out. You know, you go on Google Maps and you plot it all out. It's 3,500 miles of driving. Oh, my. That we're going to do in a little over three weeks. Oh, my goodness. Look at you. <laughs> well, it's a good thing you have the time. Maybe you could spread it out a little. I might. I might listen to some podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> that would be one of my favorite things to do. That's for sure. Oh, how, how are fun. things up there? Good. Enjoying the summer. Um, got a couple of campouts planned this month and um, watching the Olympics. The Olympics have been fun to watch the last few weeks. So yeah, just enjoying a relaxing time. Yeah. I was sitting there last night. It was so funny because um, I had signed up for a sling account mm-hmm. um, to try to watch some football. And I thought, okay, you know, I can watch some football games on sling. And none of the games were that were on that I wanted to watch. Was like, oh okay. no! And I and I didn't I didn't turn it off, so it kept mm-hmm. billing me. And I would say, okay, I got to remember to cancel this, and I wouldn't do it. And then that's another fifty dollars. And it was just like, oh goodness. So finally, I sat there last last the, before this billing cycle, right after this billing cycle, because I saw the bill hit. I'm like, that's it, and I'm canceling. <laughs> but they told me I had one month left, so I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. I, I better get on there and see if there's any movies or shows that I want to watch. And so I got on last night and. Yeah, the, the women's uh, volleyball was playing uh, oh. Italy, mm-hmm. and, and that's one of my favorite sports, volleyball. So decided to go ahead and watch them, and fortunately, they, they did uh, take out Italy. But I think mm-hmm. this is just a qualifier round, so it's just a, a, identifying who's going to be the group that's going to play later on. And I think there's yeah. like going to be four teams that move on, and Italy will still be in that four. Mm-hmm. Um, along with Russia and then United States. And I forget who the other one is, but right now they're just working on how the seeding of all that's going to work. Okay. So yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, it is. It's fun to watch these athletes in the prime, you know, just doing what they do best. It's, it's been really fun to watch. Yep. Some of them are scary good. <laughs> oh my goodness. They are. World records are dropping everywhere. It's yeah. pretty amazing. And then, yeah, for Karch Karai, if anybody doesn't know who that is, he was a pretty famous uh, volleyball player uh, in mm-hmm. his day playing playing uh indoor in college and then he went outdoors and started playing pro mm-hmm. and uh went to the olympics a few times and uh but he's their coach and i was kind of like this guy's oh. still out there you know he's still Neat. in the game which was really cool that's fantastic it's amazing to see yeah a lot of the coaches are former athletes in in one way shape or form and it's incredible to see them still enjoying getting the most out of their sport it's really fun to watch All right. Um, You ready to have a a very fun conversation with Barbara and Margaret? Sure. Our guests today are freelance writers who've written about a variety of topics. They've written 10 books together, including Suddenly Single After 50, The Kitchen Bible, and the book we're going to discuss today, Not Dead Yet. With no further ado, here is Barbara Bollinger and Margaret Crane. Barbara, Margaret, welcome to 40 Plus Fitness. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you. The title of your book, and it's kind of one of the things you're talking about before you got on here, it's like, did you entertain? And it absolutely, uh, (laughs) and just even the title of the book was entertaining, uh, Not Dead Yet. And then the subtitle is Rebooting Your Life After 50. And um, the concept of that just really hit home for me. Uh, I mean, I'm 55 years old. Uh, I did go through COVID this year and wasn't nearly as bad as it has been for a lot of people. But it was just one of those those moments, one of those those phrases where you're like, kind of get a little smile on your face, and then you realize, well, I'm not. So what's next? And I was really excited to get an opportunity to read your book and then have you on the show, so we could have some really good conversations. Good, thank you. All right, now, the, you start out the book uh, probably the way that I wish a lot of books were <laughs> started out. Um, with something just completely actionable. I'm a very actionable type of person. Uh, sure. I, I love tips. I love things I can learn from other people. And, and I can say in the last uh, two years, almost two years now, if you, you break it down, we've had a lot of reasons to not be optimistic. We've had a lot of reasons to be pessimistic uh, and to look to the future and think, oh my God, where, where is this country going? Where is this world going? What's going to happen next with all of the things that are going on? Um, it's almost like they piled on a little more than they should have, (laughs) if you will. Uh, But in the book, you share some tips for maintaining optimism. And I I loved every single one of them. Uh, There were at least, I think, a dozen of them. But could you go through some of your favorites and and talk about them? 
Okay, I, I'll start. And I this is Barbara. I think sometimes when we would get down, whether when we were hitting that a big milestone birthday or we had sick or there was another ache or pain as we were aging, it was almost like we talk daily as friends and also because of our work. It was almost like, stop it. You know, we're so lucky in so many ways. And I think that's one of our biggest things is we needed to remind ourselves of ways, things whether it's people, activities, things that we could be grateful for. We both had roofs over our head during COVID and other times. We had food on our table, sometimes too much. Um, We had TV we could watch. We had work that we were very blessed having. We had health care. So we try to do that. And it's Meg's idea to wake up and think about one thing that we like about ourselves. Because sometimes we'll say, oh, we don't like our hair today or... We don't like our body or whatever. It was, again, almost stop it. There are a lot of good things. And we try to reinforce that in each other, our grown children, and other people. Um, We also both like people. We like to socialize. And we're optimistic that we're lucky to have people. We're lucky to have family members. We're lucky to have friends to reach out to for help to laugh. Laughter is big in both of our lives. So those are a few of the things that I think about being grateful for. Okay. I I think one of the things we talk about, one of our points is to stop worrying about the small stuff. Focus again on, hate the cliche, but the glass half full. And be appreciative of, again, what we have, a uh, roof over our head, too many carbs on the table, and and all the good things. It's more like zeroing in on our assets rather than our deficits. Sort of like, you know, taking stock of what we have and appreciating it and then realizing that what goes down will come up. If one day is tough, the next day is bound to be better. And that's something I learned. It took me many years to learn that. Um, other ways to stay optimistic, be healthy, exercise, sleep, learn something new and feel good about it. Every time I learn something that's related to technology, I feel so fabulous. And like, I've really conquered it, such as learning how to work and, and plug in these earphones. It took some, some checking on Google and YouTube. So there are many ways to feel good about yourself and be happy when you wake up in the morning. Um, Have a new routine, stretch, start new habits, try different things. There's no one grading you. You're not in school anymore. Take some risks. I think one other thing is that both of us either were born with it or have become through different challenges. We're both resilient. We have both faced in our last book, Suddenly Single After 50, We both uh, experienced the loss of a spouse. Mine was through a divorce. Meg's was through death. And we managed some time. We're from that generation that married very young. We managed to navigate singlehood and build new lives. And we've done that with other parts of our lives, um, with new friendships. So that's something we're grateful for, that we have that inner, inner whatever it is that pushes us forward. Yeah, uh, you, you touched on a lot of great points. Uh, and one of the things you talked about was to to be thankful. And I, I think that's probably one of the hardest things to do unless you really take the time to build a, grat- a gratitude practice. I mean, so many times we sit down and it's it's just so easy to, to look at something and say, well, why did that happen to me? You know, uh, versus, well, you know, think about all the good things that happened to me over the course of the last 10, 15, 20 years, you know, meeting my wife, having our family, some of the wonderful trips we took, just kind of looking back at the experiences that I've been able to have, uh, you know, each and every day, it sometimes it's really hard to slow yourself down and, and kind of have that conversation. So, so how, how, I mean, obviously as we, as we go through and we age, there's life changes and things like that. Kids move out of the house, parents move back in the house, kids move back in the house, Uh, all the different things (laughs) that that, that go on. 
Yeah. Uh, how do you ladies take the time or, or t- when, do you find yourself, when you find yourself slipping off that optimism path, what are some things that you do to kind of get yourself back into that? Besides the, and I love the a phrase, you know, stop it. Uh, I don't know if you watch, I'm pretty sure you watched Bob Newhart uh, back in the day. And yes, I'm, I'm old enough to know who Bob Newhart is, but the, my favorite clip from him, and you can actually watch it on New, on, on YouTube, is stop it. And he's a, he's a therapist and a woman comes in there and says, she's got this problem. And his answer is stop it, you know, just, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> and, and, you know, she's like, I don't like this therapy, but you know, and then he said, just stop it, you know? And, and so, but it was just, it's, it's hilarious. It's a hilarious clip. Uh, if, if you, if you, you know, go through it, obviously some people have some, some issues and some mental health things that are going on, but if you're just someone who just occasionally finds yourself being a little negative on things, what are some tips to get us back on that path? Well, I think, again, having a network of people you can talk to. I mean, you can have your own things. Like, I like to take a walk in my village uh, once or twice a day. I like to garden. I paint when I have the time. But I feel so blessed to have a friendship with Meg. We talk in our book about, uh, there's a book called Friendship, which is just wonderful. And they talk about a big friendship. We don't describe ourselves as best friend. Meg has a, a really close friend from childhood. I have other friends, but we have a very honest, authentic friendship where we know we can talk. We know we can be brutally honest about what's going on. We know it's not gonna go anywhere. We know we how to make each other laugh. Um, you know, even sign of that laughter where you're almost peeing in your pants laughter. We've had a good time working together. So I say to people, find a person you like. You don't need a huge network. You need a few people who make you feel good about yourself. I think that's so incredibly important. We're blessed with, we have good kids. Do they annoy us? Of course they do at times, but then we laugh about that. So I think that I think that's made a huge difference in our lives. And we've seen, we also have friends and acquaintances who are very negative and not, and that's hard sometimes for us to be around. We know we have to be empathetic and sympathetic, but so we try to do our best with that by sharing. I think that's a big thing. I was going to say, Barbara and I both like to process out loud, hence You know, I I wake up and I'm in a terrible mood. And the first thing I do is I pick up the phone and I call Barbara and say, you're not going to believe what my son said to me today (laughs) or vice versa, what my daughter, you know, asked me to do. And we process it and we talk about it. And then in our heads, probably saying to ourselves, stop it. Or Barbara will say, Meg, when I talk to you these days, I hear a lot of uh, uhs and you know, what's going on? And laying it out there with someone you trust is so important. And oftentimes what I'll do is I will get extremely busy. I start thinking of story ideas or I love to play opera. It puts me in a good mood when I play classical music. Um, I have all these little coping skills. And I think you do too, Barbara. I do. um one thing that I greatly admire about Meg, and we and we share this, I think it's very important to help stroke each other. People, you know, not send your kid, every kid home with a trophy kind of thing or every friend. <laughs> but um, right. Meg does a lot of volunteer work. It's, of course, COVID put, you know, a damper on that. But she was uh, tutoring children in reading, and now she's doing it on Zoom, if I'm correct. Yeah. I've done uh, a lot of work, not of late, but uh, with my college. And... Think getting out of ourselves and thinking about other people. We think that's really, really essential. Good point. To to again to be thankful and know that we're incredibly lucky. Not every single day and not with every single thing, but other people are so much worse off. Yeah, and we need to help them. We need to do something about it. No, what Barbara's saying is really important. I think. And I've told this to friends who are going through a depression or a hard time. Do something to get outside yourself. It is so soothing and so nourishing and important. It makes you feel great. The right hormones are released. We also, um, we both participated in 
Zooms with childhood or high school or different friends from uh, Meg did with her friends from St. Louis now that she's in New York. Uh, that, that's that been a lot of fun of like, you know, I mean, we've all had Zoom fatigue at times and maybe some one of my Zoom groups, I think, is sort of starting to shut down. Uh, but that's been a lot of fun. We've had celebrations online. We've attended shivas online. Uh, just that constant connecting, knowing there are other people out there. Yeah. This episode of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast is sponsored by Haka Life Nutrition, the maker of GLX-3. You know the benefit of omega-3, reduced inflammation, which helps with joint pain and heart health. And you know you're probably not getting enough from your diet. But then you read about the mercury in fish, or how the fish oil supplement you bought at Costco or Walmart might be oxidized and rancid. Not good. Then you look into a plant-based solution and find it isn't very bioavailable, or creole oil, which is much more expensive and isn't really sustainable. GLX-3 is very different. It's from sustainably farmed, green-lipped mussels in New Zealand. The 17 omega-3s found in green lip mussels include ETA, which is not found in any fish oil. What is ETA? Not to bore you with the science, but it has been shown to be very effective at reducing inflammation and pain. Haka Life Nutrition has paired this oil with New Zealand olive oil and vitamin E to make a very unique omega-3 supplement. I think it's brilliant. Mussels are at the bottom of the food chain and have a short lifespan, so they aren't as susceptible to mercury contamination. And they don't starve out other species when they're farmed in open water. Haka Life Nutrition is meticulous about their sourcing and encapsulation of GLX-3. Each bottle is traceable all the way back to the place, date, and time of harvesting to ensure you get the best quality omega-3 product on the market. They offer a full 90-day guarantee. Go to hakalife.com forward slash 40 plus and use the discount code 40 plus to get a buy one, get one free deal on your first order, which gives you a two month starter supply. GLX three is my go to omega three supplement going forward. It can be yours too by going to hakalife.com forward slash 40 plus and be sure to use the discount code 40 plus for the BOGO deal. You, you got into that, and I think that's really kind of important. I, I've seen with my parents, my grandparents, and, and, and others, as, as we age, relationships change. Obviously, yes. your relationships with your children change. Uh, your relationship with your spouse may change. Obviously, your relationship with your parents will change uh, over time. Why is relationship and intimacy so important and how do we maintain the right relationships and the right level of intimacy in our life as we go through those kind of changes? I think you have to take almost a constant temperature check. Not, I'm not talking about daily, but if someone, a friend, isn't making you happy, is critical, finding fault with you all the time. I'm not talking about, you know, people should speak up and be honest and authentic if you hurt their feelings or whatever. But At times, not every friendship has to last forever, or it doesn't have to be in your life on a daily basis or a weekly basis. And I think you need to do that. I think you need, I think our generation has been so eager to be friends with our children, more so than our parents' generation, that sometimes maybe we haven't parented even our grown children as we should, you know, telling them, we don't, I don't appreciate it if you speak to me that way, or can you understand that I can't, I don't understand this technology the first time you try to explain it to me, it takes me a bit longer, or I'm directionally challenged, I need help in uh, getting to your new destination. So I think we need to do that. With each of our parents, I'll speak for myself, with my mother as she aged, and I was very much a caregiver for her and with her a lot of the time, I took on that, you know, usual role of becoming the adult. And it was very uncomfortable initially, but I knew someone had to do it. So I did it and it didn't, I wasn't always good at it. And I would sometimes say to Meg, 
I think I'm really not doing the right thing or the right job. And I'm annoyed with her. You know, I had incredible guilt about that when she would repeat the same thing 10 times. Relationships are as critical as to our lives as oxygen is to keeping us alive. Um, statistics have shown or studies have shown that loneliness can be the death knell. Um, having good social interactions can make you live longer. And I've had friends, I talked to someone the other day, lives in Portland, she had moved there from St. Louis, who said, I'm new in town, I don't know anyone. I can't make friends at age 75, it's impossible. And Barbara and I would have said to her, that's not true and read our book and you'll find out how to make these friendships. Um, there are many different kinds of friendships that we address. There are the big friendships like Barbara and I have, there are acquaintances, there are close friends from childhood where you share a history. But so, again, good chemicals are released in the brain when you have those close friendships, when you sit down and you can really hang out with these people and be yourself. And how do you find friends? We list tons of ways you can make and find new friends by joining things, you know, by taking classes and um, going to an art gallery or standing in the grocery line. Did you meet someone in a grocery line once, Barbara? I I've talked to people. I mean, when I was uh, dating during my marathon dating after my divorce, I would look at men's, <laughs> men's hands to see if they were married or not, you know, see if there was a ring, not that every man wears a wedding band. And I would look in the cart, you know, is it single serve, uh, Stauffer's, sp uh, frozen spinach or whatever. And I'm sure I talk to people. Well, you and I talk to everybody. We do. I've met, since I moved to New York City, I have met more people just sitting on a subway, on a bus, standing next to them on the street corner and working in projects, doing a project, did one for the homeless. I tutor kids. Barbara mentioned that. I've met great women who are also tutors. We're part of a team sometimes. But all of that is so important to feeling good. And a lot of women would say, well, you know, I don't know how to meet a man at this age or a woman at this age. What do we do? How do you meet these people? Barbara, you're the online dating queen, so you talk about that. I went on a lot of dating sites when I was first divorced. Um, some people don't. And ironically, after all the dating I did, then I was fixed up with someone who's, I call him my beau. But also I was going to say that it takes time to build a really close friendship. So I would say the new people I've met since I moved to my village, for the most part, I have some good friends where I live, but they're not of the same depth of some of my former friends. So I think you have to accept the fact that not every friend is going to your, be your bestie. But, but how would you define a really good friend? I would define a good friend as someone who calls you, not just texts you and says, how are you? But sometimes picks up the phone wants to see you in person when it's acceptable, who shares about themselves. Both of us like people where they're sharing, where it's not just us doing all the revealing or whatever. Someone right. you know that I think about a really good friend would be someone if I moved from here that I would want to keep up with, not just who's been in my life right now on a temporary basis. But we've also talked about good friends. They bring you chicken soup. They even feed you the chicken soup if you can't get that little spoon in your mouth. They drive you to the colonoscopies. You know, they cook for you. They would drive and pick up your mail or pick up your kids at school. Or, um, or they pick up or they go and they pick up a friend for you and bring them a <laughs> friend of mine from kindergarten. Right. It was a bride, uh, baby shower the other day for my older daughter and this friend of mine when she knew she was coming, she said, I'll go pick up Meg so you don't have to come into the city. Yeah, that I mean, was what nice. What kind of wonderful friend is that? And yeah. that's one thing about us. We like sharing our friends. Yes, we do. Not everybody does. Okay. They also help us celebrate big events in our lives. You know, they're the ones we want with us. And, you know, I have a big birthday coming up. And um, 
you know, they, um, they're there when we need them. Yeah. We, we moved to uh, an island called Bocas del Toro. Well, the island's called Isla Colón, but it's a part of the Bocas del Toro oh, nice. archipelago. And it's one of the cool things about the people on this island is it's, it's like that village you were talking about. It's like we, we all know each other. We all hang out together. Uh, if we need something, you, you quite literally just post it on Facebook and say, hey, any of my friends, are you going to the States? I need to mail a letter. So a friend has to That's send in paperwork for Social Security. To mail a letter from here to the United States would cost you about 40 to 50 bucks. Oh, my gosh. Versus uh, getting someone on an airplane to carry a letter, you're mailing it for what postage, what's 40, 55, 60 cents now in the United States. So yeah. you put postage on an envelope and they carry it to you. They'll they'll do that. If you need something like you're something in the United States that you can't get here, it's like, hey, would you mind carrying this in a suitcase? It's not big. Sure, we'll do it. So there's these just these little things that we all do for each other to make our lives on the island better. And yes, it's, it's great. Those relationships uh, mean a lot to me. Very interesting. And, and so it's, yeah, you have that from a, from a structure. And I, I, I had Vivian King on a few episodes back and she, um, she had a stroke when she was at a benefit and a lot of her friends were there. And if not for her friends, she would not have gotten care as quickly as she did. And she may not have gotten to full recovery. So uh, having those relationships, having all of that in your life is important. Uh, yes, from a practical perspective. Yes, from a fun perspective. And then absolutely, uh, Margaret, as you said, from a, um, an emotional perspective with the chemicals and everything that comes on from having those close relationships and the time together. Something that as a kid, you know, if you, you started thinking about, well, my parents certainly aren't intimate right now. They're not doing things like that. They, you know, they're not enjoying themselves. Well, they were, exactly. they were, yeah. they were, and, and they still are. So and funny. and yeah. so it's kind of that thing to look forward to is just sit there and say, okay, you can, you can think it's not happening or not going to happen, but it, it's going to happen if you want it to, obviously you can, you can decide that that ship's sailed and, and just decide it's not going to happen anymore. But for the most part, that's still an important part of your life as you get older. And so making sure that you have the fitness and have the health and to be able to do the things you want to do, because if you're already considering the the blue pill guys, uh, you need to go talk <laughs> to your cardiologist because it's probably not what you think it is. It's, it's probably something else and it's worth looking at your health yeah. first and then the blue pill if, if all else fails. But um, beyond that, and not necessarily from a, an intimacy perspective with someone else, how do you continue to find passion in your life uh, as you go through things? Because things that were important to you when you were in your 20s are no longer important to you when you're in your 30s and on and on and on. So as we get older, how do we continue to keep passion in our lives? Well, I, um, when I moved to my new location, I bought a house. It was the first house that I bought on my own as a single female, which was one of the largest groups of home buyers in the country. And this became a passion. And sometimes it's a nightmare uh, <laughs> because I'm in an older home. And I was determined to make it into, you know, the house into the home, a place where my family could come. My friends came. At one point, I thought I was running it in as my friends all wanted to come see where I lived. Um, I became a gardener, a farmer. I stopped doing that after about eight years because of all the animals eating my vegetables. Um, I painted a lot when I was younger and in college. I went back to that to a weekly class when I have the time. Um, I love to cook and entertain. You know, the entertaining went out the window during COVID, but I have two daughters who are good bakers and they were making challah, so I made a challah. They were making bagels, so I made a bagel. Meg, Meg would be cooking. We got a little competitive about some of our cooking, you know, who, who made the better this or that or inspired each other. So just being curious about different things, we found different uh, passions. I took up Pilates when I came here. I'd only done it a little bit. I don't know if that's a passion, but... Um, TV became a passion during COVID. I mean, literally, I was yeah. you're watching every night. I loved, is it Frankie and Grace or Grace and Frankie? And, you know, all, right now, Line of Duty is a British detective that I'm obsessed with. So it's always trying, knowing that there's something else to, to do and to see. 
Well, I have a new life in New York City. I moved here 22 months ago and I am walking everywhere in St. Louis. You drove everywhere. And this is a passion. I love the walking. I love the energy in the city. I, one of my passions is working with kids. I immediately started tutoring in East Harlem. I love music. I, and my son works for a classical music organization, and I immediately started going to concerts there uh, to fulfill that part of my life that I love. But there are so many things you can do. People will say to us, well, I don't know if I have any passions. How do I find my passion? And we talk about, we give a pretty extensive list in the book, ways to tap into that. You know, make a list of all the books you want to read, even the ones you read in high school that you want to reread. I mean, Barbara, how many times have you read Great Expectations at this point? I'm about to read it again. Yeah. Okay. You know, trace your roots if you're interested in your ancestry. Anybody can do that. Hey, I love the piano. I always wanted to learn to play it. My mother didn't give me lessons as a kid. Take it up now. You don't like it? Quit. You shouldn't do anything that makes you feel terrible or stressed. And uh, again, you're not in school. Nobody's grading you on what you're doing. Ramp up your cooking chops. Start experimenting in the kitchen. Everyone likes to eat. Maybe you have retired and you're not sure what to do with yourself. Set up a consulting business. Perhaps you are a PR professional and this is something you can do. There are so many options out there. And you can get ideas from, where can you get ideas from? Books, TV stores, newspapers. I think um, you need to take sort of a read on yourself, what you like. Meg has always said, I hate exercise, but she started Pilates I did. during uh, the pandemic for, it was for physical therapy, is that correct? Well, it started in physical therapy. She allowed me to try those machine things and I was complaining the whole time, but I actually didn't mind it. I, somebody asked me how I like Pilates. I said, the best I can say is I don't hate it. <laughs> so yeah, unfortunately the pandemic put the kibosh on that, but I'll do it again. We're listening to what our friends are doing, what we read in the newspapers, see on TV, um, just being open and knowing it. Nothing. I think one of our big lessons now that we is living more in the moment and knowing that everything doesn't have to be forever. If we try this class or that class or, you know, it doesn't have to be forever. And we get to explore a lot of these ideas. We're very lucky in the weekly blog we write, Life Lessons at 50 Plus. We, you know, we're sort of like, we've taken, it's a cliche, but I use it. Uh, Nora Ephron, who said, you know, everything is copy, which is, I think, what her mother told her, which is very true. We go through something and then we test it out. We, I have my list of the 15 places I'd like to go before I am dead. <laughs> also, another thing we talk about this is a great time, if you think about it, because it is perfectly okay to really do nothing. If you want to sit around and listen to NPR in the mornings or your podcast or, you know, put on a daytime soap or just sit on a bench and look around and enjoy the people and the fresh air and the birds that fly by, mostly pigeons in New York City, you know, why not? Nobody is telling, you don't have a boss telling you what to do anymore. You are your own boss now. Hopefully, unless you're still working and, and a lot of us aren't working for someone else or doing what we want. It's a great opportunity. There are fewer straight Very bossy kids who tell you what you should be doing. Well, our bossy kids, right, right. <laughs> they love to tell us what to do. Well, if you're listening to my podcast, you don't need to be sitting down. You can walk and listen to a podcast. So uh, I love that. Put the, put the podcast on, put your headphones in, but be careful. Make sure you're watching out for traffic. But yes, go for a yes. walk. Absolutely. Um, ladies, you had a, a, a topic in your book, a concept in your book that I just, I love. It's, it's going to probably be my, my mantra, one of my mantras going forward for sure. And it is, is your inner cake baked? And, and I love that from the perspective of we, you know, I, I talked to my 16 year old daughter and I told her, I said, by the time you're 24, you're not going to recognize yourself relative to who you were at 16. Uh -huh. And then she was 24. And I said, by the time you're 30, you're not going to recognize who you were at 24 as being, you know, you, you're just, 
you're, we're always evolving. And, in, and, and maybe, maybe those steps take a little bit more than six years later in our lives. I'm not sure. I think I do change enough in six years that I look back and say, who was that guy? But, you know, we have this opportunity today to write the next chapter of our book, to write the last chapters of our book. And we can make that change today. And is your inner cake baked? We keep baking the cake until it is. And once we decide the cake is done, we pull it out of the oven and we are who we are. It sets and then that's the cake. Uh, good or bad, <laughs> you know, burnt or not, uh, that's our cake. And so can you talk just a little bit about that concept from your perspective of inner cake baked? Well, I thought that after we wrote our last book, that the cake was baked. This is the way life was going to be. And I found and Meg found that we were both surprised that different challenges arose a lot with regarding health. I'm not talking about fortunately not serious illness, but things that needed to be corrected. So I'm evolving, trying to take better care of myself that because I think I took it for granted that I would always be healthy. And now I've had some problems and you know, I'm not always healthy. I think also aware of, I'm a little bit more aware, and especially of late, of what kind of people I like to be around. So I'm not rushing into some friendships. I'm letting things maybe take a little bit longer before um, the values. I grew up in a house which was semi-religious. I mean, there was a regular temple going and but I really didn't feel I knew enough about my religion. It's not that I wanted to become more observant, but I wanted to know more and become a little bit more spiritual. So I took a two and a half year program on my religion fairly recently and made some actually very good friends. So that's one way I've evolved that um, I care much more about that than I ever thought I would. It really matters to me. In my case, Losing my husband to cancer meant my whole life changed. And in doing so, I used to have friends who lost a child or a spouse or a parent. And I felt sympathy, of course, but I really didn't understand what they were going through. And I have really changed in how I view loss and my compassion quotient. It is so very different having been there, done that. Our recipes can change, and that's the good news. We don't have to keep the same recipe. I think we quote in our book, and I actually wrote this down, Daniel Levitin, who wrote Successful Aging, quotes Louis Goldberg, who I think is considered the father of scientific concepts of personality. And he says, you can improve yourself at any stage and personality traits. They are very pliable and influenced by certain situations. And as we get smarter about certain things, relate to our kids differently, learn how to handle different situations, I think one of the benefits of aging is we don't stress out about certain things anymore. Would you say, Barbara? Mm -hmm. We're much more relaxed. And if we have a toxic friendship, who needs it? We don't have to continue that friendship where for some reason in the past, we thought we did. May I interrupt? Yes. We always <laughs> we interrupt, interrupt each other. So we're trying very hard. But not you're very, to. Barbara, you're being very polite by asking if you can. <laughs> no, no, Meg gave me strict instructions not to. <laughs> we weren't going to interrupt each other. Like we, we, fit, we can finish each other's sentences. Yeah. Um, I think we be both become better, and Med, I think maybe was better at this than me, and I've learned from her. We become better listeners. Yes, good we point. People, and we hold off jumping in. You know, you tell me you have an ailment. I'm not going to right away tell you what to do or which doctor. I'm going to listen to you and then maybe suggest something. Meg said something uh, shortly after her husband died. I said something, well, I know how you feel. I didn't say exactly like that, thank goodness, but I said it close and she stopped me and she said, no, you don't know how I feel. And she was absolutely a hundred percent right. So we, I think listening is a, a way we've evolved. 
I think listening is the most important thing you can offer anybody right now. It's the only way we're going to mend some of these crazy differences we have with people and in all areas of our lives and society. And that is a skill we have honed. And not just because we interview a lot of people and we report and so forth. This is more listening in our interpersonal relationships. And it has really helped us grow closer to friends and family members. We also try not to make as many assumptions. We're very good because we're writers. We write scripts in our head. We We all do. In our head, we write them in emails. So-and-so didn't call me back, so they must hate me for now. Or this happened or that happened. We're trying to stop it. I don't think it's something that's going to... It doesn't happen easily, though. Let me tell you that. Okay, Bob Newhart. (laughs) Stop it. Yeah, two ears, one mouth. I love that. Um, (laughs) So, Margaret... (laughs) I define yes. wellness as being the healthiest, fittest, and happiest you can be. What are three strategies or tactics to get and stay well? Okay. First of all, be mentally fit. You know, as Barbara said, take your temperature, metaphorically speaking. If you're having a really tough time, find a therapist. There are so many different kinds out there, and there's no stigma attached to doing so. Barbara and I joke that it's the people who don't get therapy who are the really screwed up ones. And I'm using a good word there. Um, (laughs) The other thing, uh, I think stay healthy physically, eat well, sleep, get enough sleep. Um, I'm on an eating well kick now because of reflux problem. And I joke with Barbara, I'm literally eating like a bird. And that doesn't mean small portions. It means I'm eating seeds and nuts and it's ridiculous, this diet. But I want to be healthy. I don't want to live the rest of my life with stomach issues and get a good support system. If you have a good support system, that is a really wonderful thing, which we've alluded to a bunch of times. Those are my three things. Great. Thank you. Barbara. I'll ask you the same question. I agree with Meg. I think being active physically, as I said, uh, I take a lot of walks in my village because I love seeing the houses, seeing the gardens, seeing people out. Uh, So I've done that. Been on more streets in this tiny little place I live. I was, I work out with a trainer, um, especially trying to work on balance. I fell five years ago because of ice and snow, but as we age, our balance is less good. I saw my mother fall, have a major accident. Giving of yourself, I think, is a way, which we've talked about already, is really picking up on clues from people when they're a little sad or big sad or reaching. I have a good friend in St. Louis who's a widow, and I, I really try to when after her husband died, I was calling her almost daily. Then it was, I call her at least once a week or sometimes more. If I don't hear from her, I call her again because I want her to know that I'm there. I'm not physically there, but I'm, I'll, I'll, and I'll give her the time. And then I, I think both of us also, we're at, a, we're at a new stage where we're learning to take better care of ourselves emotionally in the sense that it's okay if we buy that pair of shoes. It's okay if we spend a little more money on ourselves, or in Meg's case, she used to buy the better chocolate. Um, Always. I think it's important to indulge ourselves a little bit because we don't know how much time we have left. Right. Yes. Always buy the better chocolate. Absolutely. (laughs) I can't eat chocolate on this crazy diet and it's, I'm like going nuts. Okay. Let's get that stomach squared away so you can get back to eating some, some good (laughs) chocolate. Will you send me some good chocolate from Panama? So they have it there. Ask her about the brands and she'll tell you. (laughs) Oh yeah. I am the expert. Awesome. Well, ladies, thank you so much. Uh, If someone wanted to learn more about the book, not dead yet, or learn more about you and your blog, where would you like for me to send them? Well, to our website, www.lifelessonsat50plus.com. The book is on Amazon. It's on our publisher's website, Roman and Littlefield. It's at 
in libraries. It'll be in all the libraries soon and in independent bookstores. Where else? Uh, yes, my, in my town, it's uh, on, uh, at Oblong and they have another bookstore. These small bookstores are important. In St. Louis, yeah, Left Bank Books in St. Louis, hopefully. Okay. Yeah, and our blog comes out if you sign up. It will land in your your email every Friday morning about 7 a.m. And we think it's a great way to start the weekend a little early with your cup of coffee or whatever. And some of them are funny. Some of them are, you know, hard stuff. It's a mix. We have some guest bloggers sometimes come on and talk about an important topic. And um, a lot of variety. We're Our good. blog is a good habit to begin. Good. The, the, the book was awesome. I appreciate having both of you on the thank show. You so so much. Barbara, Margaret, thank you for being a part of 40 Plus Fitness. Thank, thank you. you. So it was great meeting you. And we may be coming down to visit you. Good, good. That would be fun when the weather's freezing here. Yeah, it's never freezing here. <laughs> so jealous. Thank you. Welcome back, Raz. Hey, Ellen. My goodness, what a fun discussion. But their their book title says it all, not dead yet. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about how the podcast is made and how I pick guests next week. Uh, but that, that was kind of one of those things I was scanning through upcoming books in Amazon. And then you, you, know, you, you see that title and you're like, I can't not have these people on. I got, I, <laughs> I hope they say yeah. yes. Cause I, that's going to be a fun conversation. And it was, it was it um, sounded like, yeah. You know, of nice ladies. If, if, if you're in good health, generally good health, when you get older, uh, life doesn't get a ton harder. And I think that's one of the things they kind of show is that they're, they were in reasonable good shape. They take care of themselves. They do what's necessary um, you know, they're not going to be out there winning any Olympic medals or anything, but, uh, <laughs> you know, they're having fun and they've, they've got good relationships in their life and they're not looking at this as if it's over, you know, as a, the, the mm-hmm. concept of is your inner cake baked, um, <laughs> is really important because I think mm-hmm. so many people think that, you know, well, what I've done, where I am, I'm, I'm locked in mm-hmm. and, you know, I was 52 years old and I get laid off from a job. And I'm like, mm. I'm never going to get back to that income again. I'm, you know, it's just not going to happen. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be able to invest my effort and energy to get there. And I didn't want to. So I, I literally used that as the pivot to become, you know, what I'm doing today with the podcast and the training uh, and all of that. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, so uh, just recognizing that you you can teach a dog old tricks, um, <laughs> you can do different things. And uh-huh. if you're not bringing joy in, then yeah, you're not, you're not going to be who you want to be when you're older. Mm -hmm. Good point. You know, having just turned 50 myself, I can tell you that I am not the same person today than the person I was when I was 40 or even the person I was when I was 30, you know, so much of my life has changed. Priorities have changed. And, and I can, I get that pivot that you just had in your life around the same period too. You know, I don't want that old life that I used to have when I was much younger and there's a lot available. There's a lot open to me right now, a lot of opportunities right in front of me. And it's, I think sometimes we get stuck in that, that mindset about age. Like I know 50 sounds old, but it certainly doesn't feel old. And in even 60, now I'm looking at 60 thinking that doesn't sound a whole lot older than what I'm doing right now. So, you know, there's just just because we hit a certain milestone age doesn't mean life is done or it's stopped or it's over. You know, there's a lot available to us. Well, 60 is 20% more. Um, that's the account. And they'd be saying, yeah, it's a bigger <laughs> number. <laughs> yeah, sure. But, 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 sure. But, but, but no, I mean, you know, I think it's, yes, um, 15 years ago uh, when life expectancy was in the 60s, mm-hmm. 60 mattered. Um, life expectancy for most people now uh, is well into their 70s. Um, other than, you know, this last year was the first time life expectancy went down since World mm-hmm. War II. And so we do have to kind of look at that and say, okay, what does all this mean? But in a general sense, if you're healthy, if you're taking Mm -hmm. care of yourself, your fifties can be as good as your forties. Your sixties can be as good as your forties. Your seventies can be as good as your forties. It's just going to be that you have different priorities 
And Mm -hmm. so maybe you're not pushing yourself to do ultra marathons when you're in your seventies, but Mm -hmm. you're still going to be a runner. I believe I will be. Yeah. yeah, (laughs) I'm still going to be doing things that you love. And, and that's really what this, this book was all about is, is making sure that you have the relationships where you, you are living a full life. Mm -hmm. It might be redefined. You know, you might have some health issues that are outside of your scope of control, but if you do, you still have opportunities to introduce gratitude and joy into your life every single day. And if you don't, you're missing the opportunity because you only have so many revolutions around the sun before it is over. And you need to take advantage of every single day you have and live it to the fullest that you possibly can. That sounds great. And those ladies, uh, Barbara and Margaret, they sound like the best of friends and enjoying time together and with their other friend groups. It sounds like they're really taking advantage of this time. Yeah, they, 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 they're doing something kind of interesting. They basically... It's like they bought a big house as a collective group of ladies mm-hmm. and they're all moved in together. Aww. And so it's basically a, a group of women. They all know each other. They know that they're friendly and that they can get along in close quarters, mm-hmm. uh, but they bought it in such a way now that they know that their independence is sort of much assured much longer than if they were living independently. So oh, they're, sure. they're going to be able to you know have people around them that they know and care about. Uh, and have those relationships and those conversations every single day without having to go into a home or lose some independence because they just you know weren't able to do it on their own. So how neat. Yeah. So just realize that sometimes you think outside the box, sometimes you do other things, uh, but your your training, your nutrition, your sleep, your stress management, and the relationships that you're building and keeping and maintaining and, and maybe getting rid of some that you need to get rid of. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, build, build the life that you deserve, spend the time to make that investment in yourself of time, effort, money, whatever it is to make sure that you're building the life that you need, uh, because no one else is going to do it for you. That's true. Yep. The best years are right ahead of us. I think. Yeah. Now, uh, the best episode is right in front of us. Um, next week, uh, we're going to have episode 500 and that's going to be kind of a special episode you know, I'm going to give a lot of behind the scenes stuff. There's still going to be a lesson. So please come back and listen to it. It's not going to be all of, about me talking about what Alan did over the last six years. Uh, it's going to be a, a lot, a lot of that. Yes. But it's also, there's a lesson. There's a very important lesson because you don't interview 311 people or books of authors and 311 interviews and learn a few things. And there were right. things that I thought I knew when I started this journey with this podcast, um, six years ago and a lot of it, uh, it was wrong. And and now I know things Mm -hmm. a little bit better. Uh, I've learned what works. And so I'm going to share what I call the wellness system. Mm -hmm. And like I said, over and over on this podcast, I love acronyms and and lists, but this is going to be an acronym system. So uh, join us next week and we will talk about the seven necessary things in the wellness system. That sounds great. Can't wait. I'll talk to you next week then. Take care. Next time on the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we celebrate episode 500, and I share the top seven health and fitness lessons I've learned during the six years of interviewing experts and training clients over 40. Until then, have a happy and healthy week.